Okay. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm Maggie Park. I am the U.S. Market, Manage, uh, Market Development Manager for Study in Wales. Um, so we're doing this webinar series to just kind of give an overview about the opportunities about studying in the UK. Um, studying in Wales specifically will be our uh, examples. And today we're going to talk about studying professional subjects. Um, so in the U.S., we would look at pre-law, pre-med, pre-vet, things like that. We don't do pre in the UK, we do the subject. Um, so we're gonna take you through how this works, um, what you, your students need to know, excuse me, and the transferability back to the US. I'm gonna start with just giving you a general overview. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna let my uh, university reps introduce themselves. Um, so I've got Nick and Rachel here. So Nick, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Nick Brabin. I'm the regional manager covering the Americas and Sub-Saharan Africa at Cardiff Metropolitan University. Now what's gonna confuse you is both Cardiffs are here today. Um, so I always say I'm the little sister of, uh, of the universities, um, but that's a bit offensive to Rachel because she's younger than me. Um, so it's probably better to say we are a more career focused university um, we do subjects within art and design, education, social policy, management, sport and health sciences and technology. We're not as big and fly as Cardiff. <laughs> we have about 13,000 uh, 13, students, 1,300,000, I'm making up numbers, um, but we represent over 140 countries in that mix. Uh, we have two campuses, the beautiful pictures you can see in front of you, um, and the one behind me, um, Llandaff and King Coyd. So it feels much more like a community kind of feel to our university, um, smaller campuses, it makes our students feel very part um, of, a, of that kind of community feel, um, certainly once they're on there. Um, I often say, I don't know where our students hide. Uh, I never see all 13,000 for sure. Um, as I'm the kind of main contact you will have, um, I look at every application that comes in from, from the various countries I cover. I will be very bespoke with you. So you have special cases. I can reach out to students and counselors along the way. Um, I see their entire journey, which is pretty cool. And just to add an extra layer, um, I also work very closely with our admissions team. So I try to sneak your offers out first. Um, I'll hand over to Rachel, big sister at Cardiff Uni. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm Rachel, I'm an international officer at Cardiff University and I have specific responsibility for supporting students and applicants and counsellors from the US. So essentially I'm your first point of contact for anything US related at Cardiff. So we are quite a big university, um, as Nick said we are well, the big sister. So we have about 33,000 students studying with us at Cardiff and we're a pretty traditional UK institution established in 1883. We're very well known, particularly for our research. So we're a member of the Russell Group, which for those of you who aren't familiar, is the 24 leading research intensive universities in the UK. So we're the only one in Wales. And we're fifth in the UK for research quality. So that is something that kind of underpins all of our programmes and means that students are being uh, taught by academics who are really kind of cutting edge in their fields. We have a really wide range of bachelor's degrees available. So I always say there's something for everyone, no matter what they're interested in studying. And we have really good uh, graduate prospects as well. So about 96% of our students are in employment or for further study shortly after graduating. We have around eight and a half thousand international students from over 130 different countries. So we're a very international kind of diverse university. Um, and as Nick said, Cardiff is a really beautiful place to study, um, but it's also a really international city as well. So um, I'm sure Maggie will talk about a bit more about Cardiff later on, so I won't go into too much detail, but I think that's one of the best parts about studying at Cardiff University. A um, couple more things that I think are worth mentioning. We have a great students union, so it's typically top five in the UK. I think it's third at the moment. So lots of different clubs and societies for students to be involved with. And we guarantee accommodation for international students for every year of their degree, which is something that is quite unusual um, in the UK as well. So I'm going to stop there and hand over to Fangi. Thank you, guys. Uh, we do have six additional universities in the United Kingdom, but we're splitting up this webinar series um, amongst our unis. So we've got two here, but just know there's six more. Um, so just a bit about Wales itself. Also, fair warning, I have a puppy next to me. <laughs> um, Wales is in the United Kingdom. Um, we are a small country. We're the bit in red there on the map. Um, we're about the size of Vermont, if you want to compare it to something in the U.S. that you're familiar with. 
the whole of the UK is pretty much New England in size. Um, so I think when you hear the UK, you think, oh, it's massive. You know, you look at this map, you're like, oh God, it's so far away from everything. It's about a nine hour drive from top to bottom. It's a very small country. Um, so we love where we live in Wales. Obviously we're a bit biased. Um, also, I didn't say, I'm sorry, I don't have the accent. I think everyone's always a bit disappointed when I start talking uh, that I don't have it, but I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I am the daughter of a guidance counselor. I went to university in the United States, but I studied abroad in Wales when I was 20 and fell in love with it. So I came back for my master's, I stayed for my PhD, and I've now lived here for 15 years. So <laughs> this is my home. So all of us have, have fallen in love with Wales in one way or another. Um, and where I am up in North Wales, it looks completely remote when you stare at a map but it's three hours on a direct train to London. Um, I teach a class down there every Monday during normal times, take the train down in the morning, teach for a few hours, hang around for some office hours, usually grab a nice meal and head back home. Uh, it's about two hours from South Wales to London. It's about a two hour flight anywhere in mainland Europe. Um, public transportation is fantastic. You definitely don't need a car or anything like that. And getting back to the US is really easy, or Canada. Um, we have direct flights to most major cities from Manchester or London and easy connections to get to those airports. We do run an airport pickup service for our students. So we'll meet you at the airport, bring you back to your dorms, uh, walking tours of, of campus and town to figure out you know, how to get to your classes, but also they're usually led by people from your home country. So they'll point out things like where to buy your peanut butter and the goldfish crackers that you're craving and all these things that, you know, just give you that little touch of home. Um, it's an incredibly friendly place. Uh, it's known for its warm welcome, which again sounds cliche, but it's legit true. Uh, really friendly, really safe um, and incredibly affordable. Uh, I love where I live because it's on average about 70% cheaper than London. So when I'm in London, I can go and see a show, have a nice meal, go to Italy for the weekend. My friends living in London can't do that. Um, the whole of Wales is about 40% cheaper than the rest of the UK. And this is, you know, general numbers, but rest assured, it's definitely one of the lowest cost of living places in the UK. We're pretty temperate. We don't really get below freezing. We don't really get above 80. There are some exceptions to that. It has snowed a couple of times this year and it, everything shut down. Nobody knew how to deal with it. It was kind of hysterical. Um, and then when it gets to like, you know, 95, 100 degrees, like nobody knows to do that either. So, but we're generally between 40 and 60 all the time. So there's just kind of like a little blitz about Wales. We're a very Celtic nation, lots of wonderful traditions. Uh, we do speak Welsh as well as English. Don't worry if you don't speak Welsh. It just means it's around. All of our classes are in English. All of our signs are in English. Um, the majority of the population does speak English, but you will find wonderful pockets where it's thriving and still alive and spoken. And one of that is around me. 85% um, of the population in my area is first language Welsh. So it's definitely still around and it's a very living, breathing culture. So these are eight universities. Don't worry about these details. I'll put them at the end of the presentation as well. And you can always reach out to me if you want to be introduced to the US rep from that institution. But I think this is important to point out because this is what kind of sets us apart in the UK. You have a champion at that Welsh institution for the United States. So that person is who you would reach out to, to look at an application, to look over a transcript, to ask that really honest question, would this kid get in? And yes, we'd be able to tell you if they would get in or not, or what we need to see on that transcript, what level you have to be studying. So this is your champion per institution. This is Cardiff. I won't wax on too long, but just be aware we're a good mix of metropolitan city locations. It's got clubs, nightclubs, clubs, shops, restaurants, theaters, stadiums, all that good stuff you would want from a capital city, but it's really accessible. You can walk across it in about 45 minutes. So excuse me, easy to get around, really lovely city. We have lots of castles. We have more castles per square mile than anywhere else in Europe. Sometimes your classes are taught inside the castles, depending on your subject. There are classrooms inside these buildings. None of mine were taught in here, but I would often take my books to the castle and go read for the afternoon because why the heck not? <laughs> it was beautiful. 25% of our country is covered in a national park. So we have lots of areas of outstanding national beauty. Um, our students are really keen to get out as much as they can. And this coastal path is a real popular one. Students will take their holidays and see how far they can get along the coastline. You can walk the entire thing. Um, so just really beautiful. This is your general overview of UK education um, and Wales specifically. Like when I'm talking to students about it, the main things I focus on is I came for location because it's absolutely gorgeous easy to travel around, really affordable, really safe. It's just a great place to come. I stayed for the academics and the cost. 
Academics are excellent, really high level, really well respected around the world. I liked that there was a lot of freedom and autonomy in my course. I could choose kind of how I navigated through that course and how I wrote my essays on things that really appealed to me. Um, I also loved that it was shorter and much more focused. We don't do gen eds in the United Kingdom. So you need to know what you wanna study as your major on your application. But once you arrive, you hit the ground running in that subject. Um, so it's kind of like sophomore year in the US, you just start right into your major. There will be introductory courses, intro to writing, intro to research, but it's taught in your department. So it's very subject specific. So because of that, we're only three years long. Um, that also means that if you are a you know, biomed student, you don't have to take creative writing. There's no French requirement. It's just your subject. So we are quite focused. Um, most of our US students plan on coming for four years because our master's programs are only one year. So in four years, you could have your master's, whereas in the US that takes you know, six or seven years to complete. And our PhDs are three. Cost was the main reason I stayed. Um, for master's, I didn't look anywhere else. I just wanted to come back to Wales. Um, <laughs> for PhD, I did look worldwide. Um, and I ended up staying at Wales. Um, the schools that I looked at in the US were 48 and 52,000 a year. The school I ended up at was 11,000 a year. After scholarships, it was seven. And it was a FAFSA school. So I filled out the FAFSA and I got US federal loans to pay for my degree overseas. So yes, I was in debt when I finished, but I was in debt about $35,000 at the end of a PhD. I was okay with that. <laughs> and it meant that I got to live in Narnia. So it, it was pretty great. Um, so very affordable, excellent education. And then over on the right are just kind of a review of the entry requirements we look for, but we'll go into a bit more detail about that with these specific subjects. Um, we are test flexible now. We look at every application individually, and really we're looking very strongly at that transcript, at the personal statement, at the reference, things like that. So we'll go into more detail about that as we go. Just a few notes on our campuses. Really beautiful buildings, definitely looks like Hogwarts. Uh, a lot of student support. Uh, we're always there if students need anything emotional, uh, finding a job, finding housing, financial security, any of that stuff. Um, we've got a wonderful setup to support students in all their activities. Most of our campuses, most of our campuses also offer on-campus accommodation. Um, it's guaranteed at most of the campuses. If there isn't on-campus accommodation, then there's an office that will help students find accommodation and have relationships with buildings in the town that are student-focused and student-run. Um, a nice perk with the ones that do have their own accommodation is it's all single rooms. There's no shared rooms in the UK. Um, you usually have your own bathroom as well, so it's, it's pretty popular. Okay, I'm going to shut up for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to pass over to Nick to give a bit of an overview of how this works, and then we'll bounce back and forth through the specific subjects. Many thanks, Maggie. I love Maggie's description of Wales being Narnia. Every time we do these presentations, it never bores me. I love it. Um, I have a sign that shows Narnia's in Cardiff as well, just FYI. So I'll share that at some point with the group, I think. Um, so our presentation is obviously looking at more the professional qualifications, but we thought it was really good for you to kind of get a little visual about what that might look like in the UK and, and why we're very different. So what we've done here is given a few comparisons of the different programs um, available um, and how that might structure for a student. So straight away you can see that we have a three years bachelor's, one year master's and the three year PhD. Um, sometimes that's like a three to five year depending on how quickly you want to do your research right up. You could be a Maggie get it all done. You could be somebody else who just procrastinates. I don't know. <laughs> I took five um, years. It's all right. Five years. That's oh, okay. Procra nice you didn't procrastinate. Is, you worked hard. Damn. The, nice thing <laughs> is you only pay, the nice thing is you only pay for the three. So I paid for the three, but I took five to turn it in because I wanted to stay in Wales. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're glad you never left, mate. Um, obviously, then when we look at some of the subjects like biomedical science, psychology, even teaching can be done in three years as there are programs from the undergraduate or bachelor's programs that allow you to have qualified teaching status. We talk also a little bit about intercalated studies, which is where a student could actually take an additional year, but focus on an industrial placement and um, get some extra experience during that um, kind of time out, if you like, from their normal studies. I've put it as year three because that's where most students might do it. But I think I have seen students also take it in year two with some subjects. Um, and then you've got more specialisms, your medicine, your veterinary, your dentistry are all completed within five years. Of course, there would be additional registration years um, 
kind of like the first couple of years of being a doctor in a hospital and so on. And then with architecture, we could put, pop that example because Cardiff has a great architecture program. So you, at the three year mark, you could just actually drop out. But if you continue, you get your REBA one and two, which is obviously the rubber stamping of the qualification of being an architect and being able to practice as an architect. So this is just to give you a guidance. We already not only sh shrink down the kind of study time for students, but it's very, very focused. Um, you know, we don't have the majors and minors in the same way as you guys, which means that there's no summer courses to make up your grades. Uh, you can't go and do music with fly fishing, medicine or anything else. You know, we're very focused, which is why the degrees are much shorter than you might expect us to have. And then masters is just another level of refining the expertise. So from things like MBA can be done in one year, very transferable across the world particularly back to the US and North America. Now I'll pass on to Rachel. Thank you. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about some of the professional subjects that we offer and that, which tend to be quite popular with students from North America. Um, so as we've explained, a lot of the courses in these professional areas are bachelor's programmes rather than graduate entry. Um, so things like architecture, law, medicine, veterinary sciences are all undergraduate programmes. Um, but the thing I think is really important to note at this point is that the onus is kind of on you or, or on the student to research how this qualification is going to be accepted um, when you go home. So depending on what your career plans are, is it going to work for you? Is it going to allow you to get to where you want to be? Because this varies so widely from state to state, from province to province, country to country. Uh, it's difficult for us to advise you on that. We can give you anecdotal evidence sometimes, um, but it's definitely something that I would recommend um, starting the process of early in terms of, of your own research. So I've just put a very kind of basic example there, which is that completing a medical degree in the UK doesn't automatically entitle you to practice medicine in the US. So this is an example of a programme where it is possible, people do do it, but it's not going to necessarily be the most straightforward path for you. So it's definitely worth looking into how that's going to work for you. Um, so that's kind of uh, just a a word of warning, I suppose, um, in terms of, of when you begin this process of looking at these courses, um, but I will come on to some more positive information shortly. Um, so it's also worth saying at this point that some of these professional courses, which do tend to be really popular with students from the US and Canada, where maybe they'd have to wait till grad school to study, um, tend to be the most competitive because it's the same for, for students here. They, they tend to be the most in-demand programmes. So particularly things like medicine, dentistry and vet sciences, they're notoriously competitive programmes in the UK. So for that reason, they also have an earlier application deadline. So hopefully some of you will be familiar with the UCAS application process, but this is uh, the University and Colleges Admission Service, which is a bit like the UK's equivalent of the Common App and allows students to apply for universities in the UK. So for these programmes, you have one less choice of place to study. So you apply for four universities rather than five, um, but also the deadline is earlier. So you need to apply by the 15th of October, the year before you intend to start studying. So it is also another kind of word of warning that it's definitely something you need to be prepared for if that's the kind of subject area you're looking at. Um, but it's definitely good to be prepared. We also tend to limit international places on a lot of these programmes. Um, this is often due to limitations placed on us by the National Health Service. So something like medicine and dentistry specifically, that's often the reason why. So at Cardiff, for example, for medicine, we usually have 25 international places, but you'll probably see that the number of international places varies quite considerably between different universities. It's also worth mentioning at this point, I think as well, that entry requirements for these programmes do tend to vary quite considerably. And as Maggie said, we can tell you exactly what our entry requirements are for all of our programmes. But I always speak to, to when I speak to students about medicine, I always say it's really worth doing your research about lots of different institutions because many will have quite varied entry requirements and you can kind of tailor your four choices to suit your own background because some might be more suited to what you've studied previously. Veterinary sciences is also a pretty uh, popular course in the UK and a smaller number of institutions offer it as well. So that's something to bear in mind that it does tend to be um, quite competitive for that reason. But Aberystwyth is an option if you are looking at veterinary sciences specifically in Wales. So definitely worth reaching out to them for more information about that as well. 
goes without saying that these courses are also um, quite demanding in terms of grades. So we do expect students to have really high grades for these programmes. And then the application process tends to be a bit different too. Whereas for a lot of our courses, it would be a case of, of applying and then you'd have to get specific grades. Often for these courses, you'd have to also have interviews. You might have to have um, specific tests like the UCAT uh, or the BMAT. Um, and they might also want evidence of some work experience as well. So on the next slide, I'm, oh, am I? Yeah, sorry, I'm giving giving you the opportunity to speak now, Maggie. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We just shuffled this around. So I figured we'd finish the subject specific stuff and then we'll go on to uh, the next step of uh, accreditation and transferability. Um, law is the other one that you can study in the UK um, in a professional atmosphere that's not pre-law. You are actually studying flat out law. Um, so it's a three year bachelor's degree. Um, and you can subject specific into an area that interests you, or you can just take a bachelor's in law. Um, there are also LLMs, masters and PhDs available. Those range from one to three years, um, depending on which course you want to do. And they can also have subject specific. Sometimes they can also be paired uh, with other master's programs. So you can do an MBA in some sort of, you know, um, law and management or something like that. So do you take a look at what the different universities offer? Here's the, the really interesting bit. So if you do a law degree in the UK, a bachelor's undergraduate three-year law degree in the UK, you are eligible to sit the bar in New York State. This is quite a popular route for a lot of people internationally to get their law degree, their law certification to practice law in the United States. Um, I've heard that California and Pennsylvania are also on the radar for this, but I can't speak to that officially. So again, all the onus of research is on the student, but we do have you know, a fair bit of knowledge that it's worth reaching out to the US reps to have that initial conversation with them. And they can give you some guidance about where to look to find out your specific requirements. Um, but we have had students that have sat the bar in New York. Often they will take a prep course, you know, go back home, take maybe a gap year or even just a gap summer um, and sit the bar in New York. And once you pass there, you can then take the bar in any other state. So very worth being aware of that because obviously that would save you, excuse me, a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, most uh, institutions don't require the LSAT or anything like that either. It's all incorporated into the undergraduate degree. So there's your note on, on law. Thank you. Um, so now that I've told you how competitive a lot of these programs are, things like medicine and dentistry, I wanted to kind of highlight an alternative that we often speak to students about, um, because often students are really keen to get that experience of studying abroad, um, as well as studying within that subject area. So something like a BSc in biomedical sciences is what I often, and I think a lot of us often recommend to students who are thinking about applying for medicine. Um, or dentistry or a lot of kind of professional courses related to healthcare, because it is a bit more of a kind of general route into that area. So it is possible for students to do a biomedical sciences degree um, and then look at applying to med school in the US. So again, the onus is on them to do their research, figure out which schools in the US are going to accept that. Um, you know, they will all have, I'm sure, very different entry requirements as well. But that is something to consider because biomedical sciences as a bachelor's in the UK is also a route into medicine in the UK itself. So there are um, similarities and kind of overlapping elements to what students study on that course that could really prepare them very well for when they want to go into medicine. As Nick said, you can also build in things like an integrated placement year into that course. So although then you do end up studying for four years instead of three, it's such a great way for students to get experience of working um, with companies or get that kind of professional experience that looks great on their resume. And also they can earn some money often while they're doing it too. Um, but also our biological sciences courses, including biomedical science, have integrated master's options too. Um, so students might want to consider that as well if they're looking at getting um, their master's in a related field. We also have conversations with students interested in veterinary medicine um, about courses like zoology or animal science. And it's possible then for them to look at applying to vet school in the US off the back of that as well. But one thing that I think is, is kind of worth mentioning too is that often students have a plan um, and then get to the UK, maybe study biomedical sciences. And this is true of our, our own home students too. Um, but once they're exposed to different subject areas and the kind of breadth of study within biosciences, often they realise that their passion is elsewhere. And one of the great things about our bioscience courses is that they're really, really flexible and we allow students to kind of switch between our different bioscience programmes throughout the degree so that then 
they can ultimately graduate in a slightly different subject to what they'd come in with. So for example, if they apply for bio, biological sciences and then decide, actually, you know what, I'm really interested in neuroscience, they've got that option too. Um, so whilst I'd never discourage anyone from following their passion and, you know, if they want to study medicine, that's, you know, absolutely what they should go for. But I do think this is an interesting route that can kind of expose them to new subjects they've maybe not considered. It's also worth mentioning, I think, as well, that our School of Medicine does have a graduate entry route and other universities in the UK do too. Um, which can accept different courses at undergraduate level. So for us, it would be the, our biomedical sciences degree or our medical pharmacology degree, which we also offer. But we also accept a couple of medical um, sort of related courses at other Welsh universities as well. Again, it's really competitive, so it's no, uh, you know, it's not a guaranteed route, um, but that is another option. So students can kind of bear in mind that they've got that backup as well. So it's just to kind of plant that seed that, um, you know, if students, are hoping to study in the UK but their passion is for medicine or veterinary sciences um, even if they don't get into those programs or maybe they decide it's not the right route for them there are other options that could ultimately allow them to um, pursue their kind of dream career. This is also a popular route um, we find with most of our US students that are even remotely interested in this to add on this one year master's option. So if they do a three year undergrad in one of these subjects thinking they're gonna go back to med school or vet school or law school in the US, they're also gonna apply for a one year master's with us. So if they don't get into those really competitive US programs, then they have this option for a one year master's and then they reapply to those programs the following year, but they're that much stronger because they've done an additional year and have an additional qualification. Um, so you'll see in a lot of our programs, they do actually package some of these as a four-year program. Um, so you could apply for, we call it a three plus one. So you're doing your three-year undergrad and your one-year master's, but it all falls under one program, one visa, one application. So you can actually choose that path from high school into this four-year program. Um, if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> you can do the three years and then apply for the one year and figure out, you know, find your feet as you go. So over to me. And obviously what we wanted to share is that many of these kind of professional qualifications will come with a rubber stamp. Uh, we have lots of accredited programs, lots of great associations, and they're not just national, they are an international uh, recognition. So from your ACCAs in your accounting and finance that would transfer back to the US, right through to the health professions. So a lot of our programs will be very bespoke because of these accreditations. So, you know, some of the research could be, do I want to continue my career in the UK and, uh, and have that great journey? But actually, will this person um, also be accredited or recognized back in the US? And it was a really good point from Rachel before we started our session today, which is that actually thinking about the accreditation may also be a good place to start in research. So looking at things like uh, the Institute of Architects or the British Psychological Society, whether back in provinces that they would be recognised for the journey. Uh, we have another session that we did around psychology, but I think a really good example of things like forensic psychology. Um, we offer that as a master's route. So if a student comes with a psychology degree, we often ask them to have it accredited by the uh, BPS, uh, the British Psychological Society, through the graduate membership route. But similarly, it could be that the students have taken that BPS accreditation back to the US. So there's always this option of looking at another level of research around them. But these are just some of the programmes that we have at Cardiff and Cardiff Met, where we have these kind of seals over our qualifications, making them very strong graduates right from the get-go after three years. Is there anything you guys would like to add about accreditations? <laughs> Nothing massive. I, I mean, I know we keep saying the onus is on you, but do reach out to us for, you know, this is of where to start because we're happy to help. But I mean, when I explain it to friends in the US and, and prospective students, it's like if you got a teaching certification in California and you wanted to move to Colorado, you have to get recertified in that state. So sometimes it's just taking an exam. Sometimes it's just paying a fee, but sometimes it's three years of, of school. <laughs> so you want to know that before you get into it. So it's just making sure you're aware of what's required when you go back and what your goals are and how to accomplish that. Yeah. And I think the comments made around masters uh, have been very important to make. Things like MBA, you don't necessarily have to have work experience to go straight into the masters that you want to study. Um, sometimes you can go straight from your undergrad into it and re uh, refine and re-enhance your skills. 
Um, so you might have a student who do, does business management as a program and then does a master's within human resource management to hone in what they want to study or, or specialize in. Well, they might get lucky and do a pathway in it. Um, anything from finance, marketing, you know, there's lots of options, but still this kind of very channeled vision of focus on the what thing you want to do. And I think that's when UK becomes a really good option. If you know what you want to do, then come and do it in a much shorter time over here and particularly in Wales. I think the dog's about to lose it. My husband just got home. Yep. <laughs> you can talk for a minute. Yeah, pop the slide on and we'll we'll talk, take over if you like. <laughs> so in summary, there are no pre-subjects. You study the subject itself. And as my own dog starts barking in the background, fantastic. Um, you know, we're it's a campus, we're a career and student focused. Um, the amount of support for students, I think, across not just Wales, we're going to be nice and say it's just us, but, you know, across the UK, there's um, so many different levels. Um, something we do, um, and I know we, other universities will, is, you know, if a student has a disability or declared disability or support need, we will actually support that. You know, we ask about it not to do, be discriminatory. We actually want to make sure even with something like ADHD, dyslexia, we've got the right support in place for when they arrive that they're on our radar so that we know we, we need to be there for them. So that's something, you know, I think we're very proud of. Students can get involved in all kinds of societies. They can make them up themselves. I didn't talk about our students union. We're very sports focused with lots of uh, sports teams called the Archers, but we also have things like Ultimate Frisbee and um, some really random clubs that students can join. Um, and I know Cardiff is much bigger and have much, much more. Um, great place to go for gigs, by the way. Um, <laughs> so yeah. You can study lots of subjects, lots of considerations, but really, um, I hate to say it, it's all about the research. Go Maggie. <laughs> Thank you for that. We're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on these things because obviously we can talk about this forever and there are different videos that I hope you do look out for. Um, we also have a drop in every Wednesday. Uh, that's the hour before this. So if you want to pop in anytime and just kind of have an informal chat with us, um, email us, you know, transcripts to look at specific students, uh, invite parents along. That's a really informal time to just kind of have a chat with us and talk about this a bit more. But I hope that covers some, some basic intro. I'm going to wrap up there just this bit, but then we'll go through some questions. So just to wrap up the recording, so this is on YouTube, so you guys have this. All of the details um, for how to reach out to us will be in the chat box below the video. So if you do have any questions, um, please do get in touch. It can be complicated, but we can save you a lot of time. <laughs> We've spent a long time kind of cutting through the mess um, and can hopefully make this a lot clearer. I don't know if we can make it easier, but we can make it clearer um, and hope that we can offer you an opportunity you might not have considered before. Uh, so do reach out if you have any further questions and thanks so much for coming along today.